plane. I overhead the Kennedy Space Center at about 40,000 feet orbiting the Space Center when John Young and Bob Crippen lifted off in the Columbia back in April of 1981. And had they had some kind of an emergency after liftoff and would necessitate a return to Kennedy, I would have joined with them high overhead and flown down and made the landing with them, primarily to double check their altitude and their airspeed and see if there was anything visually wrong with the spacecraft before they landed and all those types of things, which I did ultimately two days later when they landed out in California. Fortunately, there was no incident on liftoff. They went uh, smoothly into orbit, and I did uh, land, refuel, and head straight to California to meet them two days later. We launched our shuttle 135 times. I probably have either been here in person or at least watched them on the closed circuit uh, probably more than 100 of them. I was capsule communicators, and as a matter of fact, for uh, I think four missions in the control room, you know, during the launching and operation and recovery of the spacecraft. And uh, I think I was Capcom for uh, a couple of Columbia flights and a couple of uh, Challenger flights. You bet. And that's kind of uh, was normal back in the early days of the shuttle program is that uh, we generally served uh, one or two missions in the control center before we got to go fly ourselves. It gave, gave you a greater appreciation and understanding of what's going on up there having been in the control room. And once again, I've been very lucky having been the president of the whole group of astronauts and cosmonauts of knowing just about everybody that's flown. I've got to meet all of our original seven and all the Gemini and all the Apollo and of course all the shuttle people and the Soyuz folks and the Mir folks and I didn't get to meet Gus Grissom. He's uh, one of the only astronauts I never met. met he and, the, and Ed White and Roger Chaffee, whom we lost on the Apollo. But I've known and met all the others. And I, one of the things I just kind of, they, they know all of, they've been through training just like myself, but the, I guess the main word I would give them is enjoy because it's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. Just savor every moment of it. I would say if your heart's set on it that you can do it. And uh, I I don't say that lightly either. I know the odds are pretty extreme, but if you're willing right now, and I try to reach to the – I started thinking about this thing when I was in junior high school and uh, became enthralled with space and aerospace when we were launching rockets and missiles and satellites and selecting astronauts and cosmonauts. When I, when I was a kid, we didn't have them. I had Buck Rogers and Flash Gordon and kind of – Robert Heinlein and all those guys who were imagining things. But it surely encouraged me, and I had an intense interest in aeronautics and space since I was a teenager. And I tell all these youngsters that, you know, I came from a little coal mining town in the state of West Virginia, so don't tell me that you can't. My my family wasn't wealthy. They didn't have a lot of money. They had a little land to live on. Uh, but it takes, uh, you can't wake up one morning, I think, as a, 25, 30-year-old person and say, oh, gosh, I think I want to be an astronaut. If these young folks are willing to start thinking about it now and work toward it, it's going to take them, I tell the youngsters, 15 or 20 years after high school before they're eligible to be trained to be an astronaut. And that's because it takes uh, several years, obviously, to get your college education. And NASA and the other space agencies want engineers and technicians and doctors and physicists and all those types of things. So obviously I would encourage them to study the sciences. And you got to do well starting in high school because everything you start doing after about the ninth grade is recorded and people look at it. So your transcript of all your high school work counts. And for these youngsters listening, your most important job right now is your education. There's nothing in life more important than learning as much as you possibly can while we, your society, are allowing you to do that. So you only get one chance at it, so don't mess it up. Stay in school. Do as much as you possibly can, as, as well as you possibly can, so that one of these days, and you got to go into college, and you got to do well there. Everybody looks at all those records. And then when you finish college, you can't, at least with NASA, you can't say, okay, I want to be an astronaut now. You've got to go to medical school. You've got to go to the uh, learn how to fly airplanes. I came from the Navy of most of our pilots came from the Navy and the Air Force, and I spent uh, more than 12 years in the Navy being a fighter pilot, a test pilot, combat pilot, carrier pilot, so that I could establish myself as a good reputation of being a good pilot. So it takes uh, 10, 15, 20 years after high school to 
to get your education, do well at it, establish yourself as a good doctor, a good physicist, uh, a good pilot, so that when ESA or NASA or Russia or China or Canada or anybody, any other space ferry nation say we're looking for people to fly spacecraft, you've done it. You you can't just do it in a day. You've got to spend 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And, and if you're willing to do those things, I'm not going to guarantee it will happen to you. And I'll, I'll say that your odds are a thousand times better than anybody else's if you've worked at it for 5 or 10 or 15 years and thought about it. No, I never have been. As a matter of fact, my mother had trouble keeping me out of every tree that we had on the property. Um, from an earliest age, I, as soon as I could walk, I started climbing, so obviously I'm not afraid of heights. That We really appreciate all of our visitors we get from the U.K., the British Isles. and I think it's uh, nearly 20, 30 percent of the people who come to see us here in Florida at the Kennedy Space Center are from your part of the world, and we really appreciate that. Uh, we enjoy working with them and working for them, so to speak, and trying to show them uh, a good time while they're here in Florida. <laughs>